Okay, now we'll move on to module two. This is a continuation of pain and tenderness. We're now moving to our third cause of focal pain, which is fibrocystic change. This is very common. So the key facts about cysts are that we see it generally in the age period of roughly 35 to 50. After menopause, cystic disease tends to slow down. On the other hand, if a woman has hormone replacement therapy after menopause, it may cause some cystic changes. Other than that, it's less common in that age group. Cysts have variable color when you aspirate it and look at the fluid. It's usually kind of greenish, brownish, tan, yellow, um, not usually nice and clear, but sometimes it can be. The features on imaging are that we want to differentiate normal thin septations, which can occur in simple cysts, from debris and from mural masses. So if we see a cystic structure that has what appears to be solid material along the wall or along a septation, that can be suspicious. And the reason we want to do this is we want to make sure the patient doesn't have an intracystic tumor. If it all looks simple, like a simple cyst, with no suspicious findings, we can aspirate the lesion for two reasons. One, for pain relief, um, or two, for diagnosis, if for some reason we have some suspicion that it might not be a simple cyst. We don't generally send the fluid for cytology unless it's bloody. So here's an example of a uh, patient who had pain in the breast, and we see this structure here, which has a lot of cystic elements but it also has this thin septation, but more importantly, this thick anti-dependent material here. This is a complex cystic and solid mass. This is not a simple cyst, and this is an intracystic papillary carcinoma that uh, we need to diagnose and then treat. So these are the findings that we're wanting to rule out when we're doing ultrasound of women that we think may just have cysts. So here's a schematic illustration there. Here we have a simple cyst. It's purely anechoic, has nice smooth walls, no problem making that diagnosis. It's also allowable to have a single thin septation like this. If so, we call these birads too benign and they don't need any treatment unless the patient desires aspiration for pain relief. On the other hand, if we see a cystic structure like this that has some anechoic portions, but then more solid looking components that are not dependent, or an intracystic mass like this. This is a mural mass, a mass growing off the wall. Or if there are diffuse low level echoes internally, these are all more suspicious appearances it's possible that this last case here with the diffuse low-level echoes is just a complicated cyst, but it's also possible that this is a solid lesion and you really can't always tell the difference sonographically unless you see these echoes move. So in this case, we have to be a little more suspicious. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to call these BIRADS4 and we're going to either aspirate or biopsy these lesions for diagnosis. Okay, next, uh, this is a patient with focal pain, and what we see is a circumscribed mass here, very smooth margins. You notice it has a fairly low density throughout, not much denser than the surrounding tissue, and that suggests to me that this is not a round lesion denser in the center, but kind of a flat lesion, so that makes me think it's a cyst without a lot of fluid, and it's easily compressible at mammography. Here we see sonographically, classic simple cyst, completely anechoic, enhanced through transmission, smooth margins, and you can see it is sort of flat and even more compressible under mammography than you see here at ultrasound. But this is a simple cyst, benign, no treatment needed unless aspiration for pain relief. Here's another patient who had focal pain, on her mammogram, we see a round or oval mass with circumscribed margins. Um, 
not terribly dense, but there are some areas of increased density here compared to others. Sonographically, we see a complex cystic and solid mass. Here's the cystic component, and then here's the solid component, a mural mass. So this is another intracystic papillary carcinoma. And probably what happened is it bled, which is what caused it to be painful. So an example of a cancer presenting with the focal pain. Okay, so we've talked about three conditions causing focal pain, abscess, trauma, and fibrocystic change. Rarely it's going to be cancer as introduced by the last slide. So I'm gonna say a little bit more about this. The association called PIAA, which is the uh, Physician Insurers Association of America. This is the organization that tracks malpractice cases and studies medical legal issues. And in their data of collected cases of missed breast cancers, they show that a painless mass was the presenting symptom in almost 50% of patients. But patients who presented with pain and tenderness, with or without a lump, it was over 25%. So perhaps more often than you would think. Now this isn't all comers, this is just those where lawsuits were involved, but it, very important to notice here that the presenting symptom was pain and tenderness. So we don't want to completely disregard it, even though we know that cancers generally are not painful and most painful conditions are benign. Here's an example of a patient who presented with focal pain. She's 52. These are her spot magnification mammograms. We see a mass here, which looks pretty benign in the sense that it's circumscribed, kind of macro lobulated. That's what she was feeling here. But notice there's another mass behind it, a mass which has more malignant features. It has indistinct or spiculated margins. It has some tiny little calcifications associated with it right there and right there. We go to ultrasound. The palpable mass here is the cyst, simple cyst, no problem there, but don't be blinded by pathology, keep looking. Here is the invasive ductal carcinoma, the spiculated mass, smaller hiding spiculated mass. So that's another way that we can be fooled by patients who have pain there may be an incidental cancer in addition to a benign finding. Okay, lastly with focal pain, we'll talk about superficial thrombophlebitis. This 62-year-old came for screening actually, and here we see a beaded linear structure here. It's where you would normally see a vein, but this is thicker and more beaded than usual. Here's a close-up so you can see a little bit better, kind of um, necklacey looking appearance of that. And this is the more chronic phase, the healed phase of Mondor's disease. Mondor's disease is superficial thrombophlebitis. It's um, a benign self-limited thrombosis of the uh, veins, usually in the upper outer quadrant of the breast, just under the skin. And then after resolution, they may become normal entirely, or they may, may remain a little bit thick and beaded, as in this case. Here's a more acute phase. This patient presented with focal pain in the axillary tail, and we see a very congested vein here. It's kind of serpentine now in its orientation. Um, but this is uh, an example of Mondor's disease or superficial thrombophlebitis, and these will present as palpable, painful cords in the upper outer quadrant. A other couple of things which can cause focal pain, secretory disease with the uh, condition of a painful plasma cell mastitis. Normally, when we talk about secretory disease mammographically, we're talking about these benign cigar-shaped or rod-shaped calcifications like here. And those are usually asymptomatic uh, and incidental benign findings. But part of this same process can be actual acute inflammation 
And then we may see soft tissue opacities like in the right breast here. And these can actually be painful lumps. So at this point, we can diagnose plasma cell mastitis. It's usually uh, under the microscope, they'll see the plasma cell infiltration. What about focal pain where imaging is negative? Well, it's very common for normal fibroglandular tissue to be painful, particularly if a woman has fluctuating hormonal levels like in the perimenopausal period. So uh, when I see something like this, I will usually explain to the patient that it's a hormonal kind of pain and that's reassuring to them if all my imaging findings are normal. Some patients will have skin sensitivity without a lump. Uh, we are not able to see the cause of this, but it is a, a fairly common symptom. And then some patients have referred pain, either nerve pain, pinched nerves, or cardiac in origin, and they may present as breasts, having breast pain. So that's the end of module two. Thank you.